Good morning, and welcome to Coffee and Conversation, episode 10. Today I want to talk about feelings. Yeah, that's a fun thing, right? That's something we all want to talk about, is feelings. Well, it's an important thing to talk about, because it's something that many of you, including myself, didn't didn't have a good role model on how to regulate emotions or what healthy emotions even look like. And as a result, many of us learn to squelch our emotions or to misinterpret people's uh, emotions based on the things, how they looked at us, how they, what they said to us because of what we experienced as a child was so unpredictable and so chaotic. So what do we do with that now as adults? How do we learn that? Well, you know, it's, it's not an easy task, but you know, I think for me, one of the things was just to allow myself in a safe environment to express an emotion and then try to identify it. And there's a lot of things out there to help you identify feelings. And this may sound very, elementary to some of you, but for many of us, we don't even know what this thing is that's coming up. We don't know if it's sadness. We don't know if it's anger. We don't know if it's frustration because nobody helped us identify this thing called feelings. And so we need help with that. And there's ways that you can learn. You can learn. There's all kinds of things on the internet right now and books that show you, there's a thing called the feeling wheel, which there's many different versions of it. And sometimes, uh, you know, when I, something like that would help you. When I was working with uh, abused and neglected children, one of the hardest things for them to express and was what they were feeling because they didn't know the word. So, one of the tools that we used were little flashcards that had little smiley face figures on them with the mouth and the eyes doing different things. And they represented different emotions. And so uh, one way to help children learn about feelings was to have them point to the one that matched what was going on inside of them because it did not have the words. And then I gave them the word for that. And so they learned. Even though you're an adult now, you may still struggle with identifying what it is you're feeling. So it's important for you to find a way to learn how to do that. Because identifying what you're feeling is the first step in regulating it and learning how to mod- modify it if you have to, or to be okay with it if it's nothing to be really concerned about. So if you don't know how to identify what you're feeling, and if even experiencing feeling is a new thing to you, which it is for many survivors because we learn to stuff our feelings, and then when they start coming up, it's like, I don't know what I'm feeling. I don't know what this is. Use those kinds of things. Find tools that will help you. There's flashcards, and it don't feel silly that you use something that's used with children. Because remember, it was a child who did not learn how to express emotion. You were a child, and so that child within you needs to learn how to do that, needs to be able to identify what what they're feeling. And that will help you as an adult learn how to do the same thing. So don't be afraid to experiment with different ways of identifying how you feel. Now, if you have, if you live with other people or you have trusted friends that can help you, then let them kind of be your sounding board when you don't know what it is that you're feeling, because understanding how you feel and is more important at at the early stages of healing than understanding why you feel that way. And sometimes we jump to the why and say, why am I crying? I don't understand. Why am I yelling? I don't understand. That comes later. The first thing is to understand what the feeling is because by identifying it and defining it, then you can begin to figure out the why. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Please subscribe, please comment. 
and I will talk to you again soon. Bye now.